Hi, this is Brad, and you're looking at a Tektronix 4051 from the late 70s. Um, I'll turn it on in a minute. It's really loud, and so it's a little harder to hear me describe it. So for the moment, I'll give you a quick introduction. Um, this is a computer, all-in-one computer, that was made in the late 70s and early 80s, programmable in a version of BASIC. And if you want to try it out, you can contact me. Uh, and get a simulator that I wrote, and most of the commands in the series of videos I'm going to make, uh, it can emulate all the commands and you can try it out. It's based on a Motorola 6800 with 8 to 32K of RAM. That's K, not M or megabytes, or G for gigabytes, but K for thousands, a lot less than you would have these days. It's got a storage tube display and graphics, Storage tube means everything you write until you clear the screen stays, so you can't have animation. It's got a cartridge tape over here, and it can store programs and data on it. It's very slow. You have to uh, move the tape like an old uh, VHS um, to get to what you need. It's got some extensions in the back. I've got a fast graphics and a, a RAM pack, but you don't need those. Later models were the 4052, which was faster, and the 4054, which had a larger display. These things weigh a ton. I think this is 50 or 60 pounds at least. It had a number of add-on devices, including a hard drive, an 8-inch floppy drive, um, a hard copy unit, which was a one-color printing unit on some silvered paper that would get dark if you left it in the sun, there was a joystick to control the graphics, and a pen plotter, uh, which made some nice uh, output. Uh, you could even put colored pens in it. Uh, if you want to see one of these in action in um, a movie or entertainment, you can watch an old Battlestar Galactica show. Some of the early ones used uh, 4051s. I think Tech loaned them uh, a hundred of them or something like that. Um, they were quite popular in the scientific and other application areas in the late 70s and early 80s. I think I've heard over 100,000 were sold. So let's turn it on. It'll make some noise. Hopefully you can still hear me. Switch is under here. It takes a while to power up, mostly just because of the display. Nothing about running or starting an operating system. Hopefully you can see the flashing cursor there where you can type and the display often starts with a very bright uh, areas of mess and you can clear it by what's called the page key and then you get a nice clean display. Uh, it's got a pretty normal keyboard, a little different than, than a normal laptop or computer today, but basically pretty close. Most people type uh, programs and other commands in all caps. There's a TTY lock key to type in caps, and that's what I'll do. Um, as you type things, there's no erasing characters, so if you backspace over and type again, you're typing over the letters. Um, if you want to clear everything out, there's a rub out command, and then you can press return, and you sort of start over again. If you don't like what you type, you can also press the clear line editor key, and it will clear the line. So it's ready to run commands, simple basic commands, a version of basic that Tech wrote. Uh, let's give some examples. I'll try to type from the side here so you can see. We can print numbers. We can do simple calculations. There I made a typing mistake, so I'll backspace over it. Um, we can set values into variables and then look at them. And instead of using the page key, you can type the page command. If you don't type something correctly, like here, instead of print, I mixed up a couple of the letters, it will give you a syntax error, and you can type over and fix some of it. So let's write a simple, basic program. I'll try to put all the programs up in the comments somewhere so that you can see them. And again, you can try them out if you get the simulator from me. This is a 
is a simple loop that will run 50 times. print the value of the loop variable. And now we have our program and to run it you use the run command. You can see it keeps putting a number on each line. When it gets to the bottom of the screen it doesn't go anywhere else. It tells you with the flashing F up here that the page is full and you can press the page key for it to continue. If you want to see your program again, you can use the list command, and there it is. So let's make a change to our program. Let's list it out again. And let's see what happens if we add a semicolon to the end of that print statement. And you can see instead of going to a new line after each number, it just continues printing. There's about space for... Uh, let's see, I think it's 72 characters across the screen, I'd have to count. We'll look at the move and draw commands, which move the cursor and then draw to a location. So let's draw, uh, enter a new program. That loop will go up by tens instead of the default of one. And at the end, we'll tell the cursor to go to the home position in the upper left. So there you can see some of the graphic lines it can do. Basically all the graphics on the 4051 are basing, based on drawing little line segments. So it's limited in some ways, but it's amazing what you can do with that. When we turn off the 4051, we clear the screen and turn the power off, and you're all set. So that's running commands in what's called immediate mode mostly, uh, when you just run them from the cursor, and also running in program mode where you see the line numbers and it goes through and runs the commands. We learned about nine commands, maybe ten. Print, page, home, setting variables, for and next for loops, move and draw for graphics, run to run a program, and delete or del for clearing out your program. In the next video, we'll cover 4051, the 4051's numeric variables and some math functions.